morning. Welcome to Coffee and Prayer with Pastor Eric. It's Friday. It's Friday then. It's Saturday, <laughs> Sunday. What? Whoa. Yeah. You're young. Right. Kind of. Uh, <laughs> young at heart, maybe. <laughs> old, old at hair. <laughs> yeah. You look good, but, though. But at least I have it, you know? That's what I say. As you, as you get older, if you're going to keep your hair, you've got to be willing to let it go gray. I, I noticed myself, like, in a... A video thing. Yeah, I was like, it looks kind of thin back there. I might have to start wearing like. Oh, when you see like yourself a, from the top and the yes. back, and I'm like, move. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't look good. Yeah. Um, welcome to Coffee and Prayer with Pastor Eric. We're glad you're up. If you have not got yourself a cup of coffee yet, or hot chocolate, or tea, or whatever you drink, go ahead and get that now because we're we've got a great morning packed packed up here. We're gonna pray uh, along the way. Uh, as soon as your prayer requests come in on the chat, uh, we will lift those up in prayer. Uh, we just call time out wherever we're at and lift those up and. Uh, because when we get that opportunity to talk to God, why wouldn't we, right? Yeah. And so uh, Brandon McNace is joining us this morning. Uh, is this your second or third? This is your third. But it's been a year because you, you're, this is so popular now. Okay. I'm like that B role. Oh, You know, I'm like okay. I'm at the top level. Your agent has to call yeah. my, you know. No, I don't have an agent. It's all, it's all these other guys that are super popular. And those guys know who I'm talking about that, you know. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Uh huh. Yeah. And and they bump you. Is think, that what it is? I think so. Yeah. Jeff Johnson. If Jeff I had Johnson you on the available. list, and next thing you know, somebody else is sitting here. Names like, bumps what? me. Yeah. yeah. All these like celebrity local. Right. Celebrities. Al Lorenzen, like his, you know, he's trying to like be that lady Pollard. horse now. Jamie uh, Pollard. Bumps right. me. Bumped. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah. So say hello in the chat as you check in this morning. Hello, Aaron Eitenbrook. Uh, good morning. Good looking pair right there. People put that stuff, and I'm like, where? Yeah. You know, yeah. Where I'd like to see Eidenberg wrestle you. He and I have, we've locked eyes before, but we've we've stopped short of, like, you know, the throwdown. He, he looks like, so Nathan, our brother-in-law, I met, yeah. him, met him and said he looks like the hitman because he's got, like, the shit. He's really, yeah, like, you know, right. like, yeah. so he's, I call him the hitman. He is the hitman. Uh, so welcome to Coffee and Prayer. Today we're going to be talking about... Uh, you know, we hear this sometimes, this like little phrase, language of Jesus is Lord and Savior. And it's like, yeah, those are like nice words and titles. I, you see my shirt today? It's a, good, it's a good looking shirt. It's my maybe third time wearing it on the show. And uh, <laughs> Brandon walked in this morning. He's like, where do you get that? And I'm like, that's right. It's a good looking shirt. Yeah. You got to be in the club. I'm not a wrestling guy, so I can't. I can't yeah. Wear it. And so the back of it, it's not the best thing to do on camera. It's, you know, what is it? God, family, and wrestling. What else is there? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I saw this as a, a kid wrestling video on Facebook one time. I'm like, I got to have that shirt. And it makes you look buff, too. Well, I, you know, I, I've had it tailored, so, you know. <laughs> you shrunk it. The most important professional you need in your life. This is my tip for like old man to young guy tip. The most important professional you'll ever need in your life as you get older is a better and better tailor. <laughs> they just, you know, body changes and they they keep so it looking So I keep right. shrinking my shirts. I do the laundry and I put it in the dryer and I shrink my shirts. Yeah. And then everybody's like, oh, you're in the gym. And I'm like, yeah, I'm in the gym. Yeah. Here <laughs> to here. <laughs> yeah, big guns. Yeah. Uh, last week, Al Lorenzen was on the show. We were talking about... Uh, spiritual growth, it, spiritual maturity, that process, uh, not as a ticket into heaven, but as the, the, the transformation from heaven. Yeah. And we just live it out and walk it out. And, but how can we bring goals and, and intentionality around setting uh, a path or a journey yeah. through a year or through a season uh, to make sure we're not just at another end of another year and another year and we, we haven't grown and developed? Yeah. The reality is that following Jesus, there's no way around it. It's going to be a growing experience. So this week, uh, you're coming in, and uh, as we get uh, caught up, uh, Ann Bass, good morning, from Big Spirit. She's up north. Okay. Yeah. You fishing up there, Ann? Get get, get the walleyes, right? It's good weather. And by the way, you know, if if there was an invite on there to come up and do a little (laughs) walleye fishing, you know, we might bite. Or if you have a huge buck. That you need huge dealt book. with, I will deal with. Yeah, I'm exterminator. Yep. This coffee we're drinking, Brandon, this yep. morning is from Stump Town. Stump Town Coffee. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a good one. Yeah, Pretty good. Um, what, what coffee are you guys drinking out there? Yeah, it's coffee and prayer. So yeah, you know, yeah. You, you can't just like it's all prayer. Uh, what? Wait, what? Jesus probably drank coffee. He, I think he did. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so we're going with that. Shout out to Lightbright. Shout out to Lightbright. We got to do a, a on location yeah. uh, broadcast. There. Pastor Matt, figure it out. Yeah. I'm Pastor Matt still. Yeah, I do too. Yeah. Um, so we're getting going. Uh, 
Brandon McNace is with us on Coffee and Prayer with Pastor Eric. Good morning, Tim, Aaron, Dan. Uh, as you're uh, jumping in this morning, uh, we're going to do a little, just before we get to it, we're going to do a little catch up with Brandon McNace. Uh, he's from the thriving metropolis, my, my favorite city in the world, the center of the earth. It's called Dallas Center. God's country is what right. I tell it's people. God's country. And I travel, they're like, God's country? I was like, yeah, Dallas yeah, when, Center. When, he, when, when God you know, wants to come and be present, he, he calls his travel agent mm -hmm. and he wants to fly directly into D.C., so I don't know if this is in the Bible or not. Yeah. I think it's in Second Opinions. Okay. I think. Second Opinions. Second Opinions, I, like I think. That. But when he said, let there be light, mm -hmm. it like it just stayed. And then, then when the dove came down and hovered, yeah. it was actually when everything started forming, it actually was dove. It's what I heard. I don't well, know if it's true or not. Right. Second Opinions. Second Opinions. I like that. And I think I might have seen that. Yeah. Were you around? Yeah. Oh, wow. I think so. <laughs> wow. That's in tall tales. And all the people are all the people that are like, oh, it's two billion years old, Eric. Uh, well, maybe. I don't know. Hey, uh, so this morning we're talking about Jesus is Lord and and Savior, or sometimes Jesus is Savior and Lord, and sometimes in the daily walk, those two those two things can get separated from Him, and we rely on Him more for what He's going to do, and then we're not so sure about how we're going to. Uh, Walk and abide in him and obey everything he's yeah. commanded and taught as, as, as Lord, yeah. like in charge, yeah. you know, uh, commander. Yeah. I love that. I like that word, commander. Yeah. Because I guess you maybe call you? I start thinking of myself that way and it's like, <laughs> yeah, James T. Kirk, you know, yes. Thing. Yes. make it so. Yeah. Or that was Picard, but yeah. anyway. Catching up with Brandon McNace here uh, before we get to Jesus is Lord, is Lord and Savior of my life. And may, probably, I know yours, yeah. and maybe yours. Um, if you do call Jesus uh, Lord and Savior, put that in the chat. Let's just yeah. let's give you an option, opportunity to declare that this morning. Um, what have you been up to? You hunting, fishing, traveling? I'm uh, hunting a ton with my boys. Okay. My, my oldest got a deer for the first time, so that was super exciting. I didn't think that I would like it as much as I did, you know, that feeling where you shoot something and you're like, get all flustered. I had that same feeling with him. Yeah. It was just, yeah, it was amazing. Um, and so, yeah, I've been traveling a bunch. I've been, I uh, got back from Brazil since the last time we talked. I'm going back here in a couple of weeks, flying out to Pennsylvania tonight. And then I've had a uh, five weeks of preaching, which is like, like my longest stretch of preaching yeah. and um, just lining up trips, going to Peru and, and January for a few weeks and just, yeah. So you had, it. Brandon had, you had been working at a church here in yep. Des Moines. And feeling more of a call from God to to move toward evangelism, uh, evangelism, yeah. and uh, which is super scary because yeah, right, yeah. the form and function of that is is a little unwieldy. Maybe yeah. uh, you walking in faith. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. You, you abandon everything. It's like, wait, what's this thing called a paycheck? And you just live in faith. And so I think it's crazy. Like my bank account is doing this, but my faith is doing this. And so you know, especially going overseas, I have seen. We don't even have enough time today. Yeah, the stories that I've seen and God's power, okay. like his majesty, his glory, the things that I've seen, especially in Brazil, this yeah. last trip. Yeah. <clears throat> so crazy. let's plan on doing this again shortly Yeah. and we'll do stories with Brandon. It's yeah. People right. will be like, what? Is yeah. That really? yeah. There's some crazy. So that, that's like a little heads up, a little get yourself ready. Cause you probably have to have a seatbelt to hear some of these stories, right? Yeah. yeah. They're a little, but, it's a little, it's, it's in the Bible, but it's, we don't necessarily see it in Iowa. Yep. It's, so. it's, yeah, yeah, and if, if people aren't around that conversation or around that uh, reality, those things can seem like they're, I'll just say, biblical, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Uh, words like miraculous, healing, uh, yeah. spirit of God movement. Yeah. Um, you can, it's like, it's tangible. Tangible. Like you, can, you can taste, touch it. You can feel it. What I tell people is, so the, the devil's real. We like to pretend he's not. Oh, yeah. He's real. But here it's like money and, and you're busy and uh -huh. take this pill. But when I went over there, the, the battle lines, the good and the evil and where they meet, I mean, it's, you can see it. Yeah. I mean, you, can, you can feel it. And so people coming in with demons and yeah. there's people that, uh, a lot of witchcraft down in Brazil. Yeah. So people are like sacrificing animals, drinking their blood. I mean, there's just, and you're like, what? This is this really real? It's 100% it's real. And this stuff that goes on in the poverty and the, <clears throat> some of this stuff that I saw with like the kids, it just, yeah, it wrecked me. Yeah. So. Yeah. So now I'm going to go back. It's like, hey, let's go back. Yep. It's like uh, I've been making salsa and hot sauce. Let's see this way it's And so like uh, <laughs> it is hot and spicy. And once you start eating it, you can't stop. And I think that's where 
God, that is one of the best transitions. God does this thing <laughs> with us with the hardest mm. darkness, profound uh, yeah. evil. When I don't think he always wants to show, he protects us from it, you know? Yeah. Uh, lead us not into temptation, uh, deliver us from evil. Yeah. We, we pray that and sometimes don't even know it's about these types of things. Yeah. Uh, some people are ready uh, for different levels of yeah. uh, vi vision around evil and some people would be just tremendously crushed by it, eaten alive. And I think that's a little bit about what we're going to talk about today is this, this path of spiritual maturity and how it is uh, we receive salvation from Christ. Yeah. And at the same time, it's not just, hey, thanks a lot. I got, hey, I got a new Amazon package <laughs> in here and, and it's all, it's just for me. Yeah. You know, I got, I got those three swim jigs right here. I just ordered them, man, and they came in my front door and it's like, I'm trying these because it's it's the season. We're, we're back on for maybe the month of late October, November for fishing. But it's uh, when we confess with our lips and believe in our heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. The Bible says. And so there's 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 a. It's not that like well there's two pieces to this thing. It's like nope, there's not. He wants your entire life, and that's what we're we're gonna get to. Yeah. But. Um, so good morning. Uh, my mom's on. Connie Slate, uh, Beth uh, Crushwitz is on. Uh, hey, there's Beth. Jesus, my Lord and Savior. Anne's my Lord. Jesus is my Lord and Savior. My mom, Jesus, my Lord is Savior. I mean, talk about uh, that blessed assurance, mm -hmm. knowing that there's something that happens when you when you even realize that you believe it, right? And I think there's levels of it too, because I think what I've noticed is, uh, and I, this is for everybody. God wants more and more of our heart. Yeah. And when you say Lord, there's a lot of, I mean, we're going to get into it, but there's a lot of connotations, there's a lot of things you can extrapolate from that. But the idea is, if he's Lord, he's Lord of everything. Yeah. And so often, and the more I meet people, we've all been hurt. I was out in um, Colorado, John Eldridge wrote a book, Wild Heart. Yeah. And so uh, Chris Tomlin's father-in-law, Reese, had this thing out there, and I got invited out there, there's like 80 guys. And we all have a wound. We, typically it's given from a father, and we believe a lie. And then from that lie, we make a vow about ourselves, like, mm -hmm. I will, you know, whatever. So I, my, mine is I am abandoned. So if my, my vow is if I can make everybody in this world love me, then I won't feel abandoned. Yeah. Um, and so we live this false self and we have these hurts and we have all this stuff. And Jesus is like, I'm Lord of everything. I want to be Lord of the hurts. I want to be Lord of the, the secrets. Yeah. I want to be Lord of everything. And it's this process of the more we give up because we've been hurt so much. Can we really trust this Lord, this authority yeah. figure yeah. to take more and more of us? Yeah. Because that's a very vulnerable, if he's Lord, he has complete access, complete control. And we've been taught, we got it, we right. can do it. Right. And so it's counterintuitive from our culture of stand up and fight for it. And us as Americans also, and it's like, well, if he's Lord, I fall on my knees and I go, what do you want me to do? You want me to give up my career yeah. and, and yeah. be an evangelist? Yeah. And I have to trust that. So like it all goes back in the last few weeks. So I've been asked to preach on, so I got asked uh, one, one weekend, salvation. Okay. And I was sitting there, I was like, that's my jam. Yeah. And so I said, God, what do you want me to talk about? It's his goodness. Mm -hmm. The next week I talked about power and glory. And then last week I talked about sacrifice, but I've been led to talk about his goodness first. And so when you had said, hey, let's talk about Jesus as Lord. I don't think you can believe that Jesus is Lord unless you believe that he's good. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I was in this uh, church and it was like a super impactful moment for me this last probably month. And <clears throat> back from Brazil, so my mind's changing a little bit of how I preach. I'm in this library. So here's a little story. People are like, oh, this guy's a little crazy. So I'm in there and I, I, I cry, I tear up. You yeah. know, kind of, we, we've yep. shed some tears and it's like, God, yeah. this is really good, right? Yeah. And so I was like, God, you want me to talk about salvation? Well, you know, what do you want me to start with? And then I heard my spirit, my goodness. And I was like, your goodness, what? So I did, this is like my super spiritual preacher trick. Yeah. Google verses on the goodness of God. And so I, I Googled that and all these verses came up. And so I started reading through them and I was in this library of this church and I'm not kidding you. This has never happened to me before like this. It's almost like the Holy Spirit came in and it rested on yeah. me and I wept for probably 20 minutes trying to read through these verses about how good he is. And then I, at, for 20 minutes wept and I felt this statement come into my spirit. If you truly believed in my goodness, there would be no room for fear. Mm -hmm. And the one verse that stuck out was Mark 10, 18. So if I, and I, I mentioned that the feels of faith thing. Jesus, who I would say is the good one. Yeah. He goes, he's telling these people, why do you call me good? Mm -hmm. No one is good, but God. But 
a lot of times if you've been hurt, if you've been through stuff, you think of God as like, he's frying the ants on the ant. Yeah. He's really mean. Yeah. Jesus is going, no, 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 no. He's the good one. And if I believe that he's the good one, I can let my guard down and let him be Lord. Yeah. And so that's what this goodness piece, I don't know why. I don't think it'll be my thing forever. But for this season, I just feel like you keep saying, tell them. And I've never had more people say, that sermon was so impactful. And I'm not preaching these <clears throat> crazy things. Yeah. I'm just talking about his goodness. Because if we can't believe in his goodness, um, I don't know, I'll keep talking. Keep about going, it. man. There's another, here's another kind of, so I was at the mall. Okay. With another pastor. And, and the, the food court, there's, I don't know, 700, I don't know how many seats. There's a lot of seats that you can yeah. sit on. And this lady with a family, or with a guy and two girls, you, it looked like she was on drugs. Like my first impression, but something was wrong. And I noticed her and she was walking around and she sits down right by us. And I'm like, and there's tons of seats open. Yeah. And I'm like going, all right. What's going to go down? Uh -huh. Is something going to go down? Because she was highlighted. I knew something. All of a sudden, she turns around. We're not talking to her. And she looks at me and my pastor friend. She goes, what do you two do for jobs? Really angry. Like, very angry. I was like, oh, I'm glad you asked. I'm an evangelist. And he's a pastor. And so I went through this thing. And it was like this teeter-totter. I could see her humanity. She was crying. And then something took. And people were like, oh, it was just the drugs. It was more than that. It was yeah. demonic. and stuff. Yep. But the lie. So this is what she said. And this is what I preached on one weekend. So if we're talking about the goodness of God, this is what she said. So this demonic-filled person, granted she was on drugs probably, but, but he, this is the lie. All of a sudden she goes, and, and I don't know this lady, and she says this. And I don't know why, but something just, I heard it and I can't forget it. She goes, I have a daughter, and I would never send her to die. Mm -hmm. How could a okay. good God send his son to die? So the lie that a lot of people believe because of their past, because of stuff, and that you didn't deserve it. Like, all this stuff is God cannot be good. And if you can't get past that, you can't talk about salvation. Yeah. You can't talk about it because I won't submit to Lord if I don't believe that he's good. Yeah. So I think that, you know, earlier you said when you were down in South America, you saw some things mm -hmm. that hadn't seen before. Yeah, right? Yeah. It's like no scripture, no God's story, no your own story. And you go into a new environment and, and in some ways it's a totally different thing and different people, different part of the world. At the same time, it's humanity. And so in, in another respect, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's God, cause God's still at work in the big picture story of sending his son to, to seek and save the lost, yeah. right? Everywhere. That's the prime mission of God is to restore all things to himself. Yeah. And when uh, there's a, a, a piece in, uh, we're kind of already on the first question. What are some of the most uh, evident realities of your life that, are, that directly result from you declaring Jesus as Lord and Savior? And I think if you're listening this morning, it's not just a question for Brandon or, or me through the week thinking about like, how, do, how can we ask questions to ourselves and to each other that, that get to the heart of how we new like nuance the beliefs that we have. Yeah, because they're they're that's, those things are actually important. Like, Why do I believe this? Like, well, yeah. sure, he's the Lord and Savior. Yeah, but do you believe God is good? Well, you know, I don't really get that. And it's like we probably need to talk about that then. No, because that will have an, a direct effect on how you understand him, mm -hmm. right? Um, I, I remember like with that lady saying, you know, how could this happen? I think we have that type of question a lot in scripture. What, what's happened here? What, even, at, even at Pentecost, like what's happening here? And what's happening is God, there, there's circumstance, mm -hmm. but what's happening is God is revealing himself. And you know, Jesus uh, had, had been healing and they did some like teaching that was really starting to unveil his, Lord, his, yeah. his lordship. Yeah. And people got ticked and left, you know, as many were coming, they were leaving too. And, uh, Jesus turns to Peter and says, hey, you gonna leave too? <laughs> and Peter said, you know, you're the Christ. You know, you, you have the, you're the one with the, uh, the, word, of, the word of life. There, there's nowhere else to go. Wow. But that lady you're talking about, it, I, when you're telling that story, I'm thinking that uh, the interaction of that piece, yeah. I, 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 I do not understand, nor do I accept that God sent his son uh, into the world that whoever would believe in him would not perish but have eternal life. That's not goodness. And it's like, 
that's probably what we think. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, why his ways are higher than our ways. Yeah. Things like he loved us while we were still sinners. Yeah. It, it's you're gonna get now to that her claim or her position in that day is like this place of like what it needs, and I think you guys were probably doing it then is it needs the revelation from God that mm -hmm. that yeah, that's the reality of things. That it was brutal. Yeah. And uh, that's the, it's the sacrificial love of God, and I don't know. It's it, that's a great story. It's yeah. It was it was an interesting. Because I think a lot of people are in that, and they don't really, you know, it's like they go. People might go to church. They may have been to church, kind of quit going, drifted off, maybe watching online. Some people at like full worship level. Yeah. Some people like you know drinking coffee and. Uh, getting the portable speaker on, on, on your UTV and driving yeah. around in the morning, like halfway in it, half not. And it's like, do you really know who this is? Yeah. And I think that it's, that it's that revelation after revelation. It's, it's all about revelation. Yeah. Um, one thing that happened to me is uh, when I was down in Brazil, I'll kind of just, I'll just yeah. tease. Okay. But come on. I was, we got to this really, really big church. And if I'm honest, I'm like, yes, I'm going to preach at this church. Correct. This is going to be fun. All yeah. that sort of stuff. I yeah. didn't preach there that night. And I noticed that it was my my pride. Mm -hmm. It was my pride that wanted to preach there. Not necessarily to do his will, but to do my yeah. own, right? Yep. And so I, I felt, think that's happening all the time in everybody. And it's the question is, what do we do with it? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And so I said, oh, God, I'm so sorry. Yeah. And so I, like, I went to yep. the altar and I called it. You know, I was like, God, I'm yeah. sorry. And so no one knows me there. I'm in the middle of nowhere, right? It's a, you know, this town. You don't know Spanish. Uh, Are they Spanish? Portuguese. They're Portuguese. In yeah, I'm going to okay. share this on my page. Sorry yeah. to all my Brazilian Portuguese. Portuguese. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And uh, I'm there and this lady walks in that, I, you know, it's, it's a bigger church, but this lady walks in and she points at me. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay, no, I, I haven't preached there. So no one knows I'm a preacher. She walks right up to me and I get my interpreter over it. And she said, I saw you in a vision. Okay. And she goes, I don't go to church here, blah, 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 blah. And, and I'm sitting there and I'm like, what? And she told me all of this stuff that God told her to tell me. She described my office where I write my sermons, like all this. Like it was a long, lengthy thing that she told me. And she goes, why are you so afraid? And she literally spoke to these fears that I've been having stepping out of faith. And I was thinking, okay, this is crazy. A day later, and I was like, God, you're so good that I could be in Brazil. And you said, she doesn't go to church there. Okay, well, yeah, yeah. Too. She doesn't go to church there. Like, and she said, God told me to come here. So then you're like thinking, okay, maybe somebody put her up to it. A day later, a lady walks up to me and she grabs my arm and she looks at my tattoo. She's like 19. And she goes, is your name Brandon? I said, uh, what? And she said, I had a vision. She goes, I don't go to church here. She goes, God said that there would be a man with a tattoo of his right arm. His name would be Brandon. I'm supposed to tell him some things. And she literally said word for word what the yeah. lady the night before said. When he's a Lord, and, and here's the thing. Did they need him more than me? Probably. But I was in this fear mode of, God, what am I doing down here? Yeah. Like, what, what are you trying to show me? Yeah. And I lowered this thing of, I'm going to be, <clears throat> and I lowered this. I put my guard down, and he goes, and now I can talk now to you. Now we're ready. Because even though he's Lord, right, if you go to it, like, if, if I fall before a king, sure. the king can say something to me, and I don't have to listen to him. Yeah. But when I let my guard down and believe that he's good, he goes, and I've been trying to speak to you the whole time, and you won't listen. If you truly believe in my goodness, there'd be no room for fear. Now go. Yeah. And so that's this thing. When, when he's Lord, it gives you a, the authority to step out now in faith. Because like when my dad got sick, what happens a lot of times is I can't believe in the goodness or I can't believe if Jesus, you know, if God's Lord, how could these things happen? Right. Okay. I, I met a lady. Here's one. This happened yesterday. A lady. So the park where I live, a lady fell over. I didn't see her fall. I just saw her sitting in the grass. And I was like sitting there and I was like, came out of my garage. And I was like, is she hanging out? Like I couldn't tell. And so finally I walked up to her and I knew she had, she had some blood on her, on her face. I said, are you okay? I didn't ask, are you, do you listen to Fox News or are you listen to CNN? Right. What are, are you, what, I didn't ask me that. It was, are you okay? And, and she was telling yeah. me yeah, all this stuff. And then uh, I got her chair. I, I helped her husband get, find the park and she's probably in her seventies and stuff. Anyways, a lady came over <clears throat> who saw it and she said, this is why I moved to Dallas Center. She goes, I used to live in a big city and I came here and she goes, this is how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing, like. God's goodness finds you wherever you're at. Like, I, I'm not saying I'm God. I'm just saying this lady fell down and I was impressed. I'm going to go over there and see if she's okay. Yeah. So when my dad got sick, like when you step back, when everybody, all these bad things happen to you, when you step back, and we've talked before about some stuff with your dad, but when you step back and you look at the timeline, you go, oh, God was there the whole time. And this lady that saw this, she shared, she's probably in her 60s. She shared some pretty 
horrible things that happened to her when she was a little girl. And she told me, she goes, God, it's so good. Yeah. And she goes, when I, when I finally said yes, God, yeah. and I think she was 52, she told me when she said yes, she looked back on her life and she said, I saw him there yeah. and I saw him put people there. She, I said, how did you get saved? She was in a trailer park in like Waterloo or something. So she's listening. Sorry if I messed up your story a little bit. I think it was in Waterloo. And I said, how'd you get saved? She said, I was drinking, I was smoking, I was doing all that stuff. And she said, her neighbors invited her over. They didn't drink or smoke, but they didn't say anything about her drinking or smoking. And they loved her. Yeah. And then one day they said, why don't you come to church with us? She said, she went there and she said, cold turkey. She didn't drink, smoke, like she prayed. She's got God, yeah. would you take us away from me? And it's just like, he's there. Because if, if he's Lord, he is Lord of everything. Yeah. So I can go in your backyard and meet him. Yeah. I can go. In, and yeah. so that's the thing. I don't know. Lord of all. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> when you think about uh, your own, your, your life with God and how he's created you, sustained yeah. you, give, given you a life, a direction, a future. Yeah. Um, promises of heaven, inheritance of God, yeah. like, you know, the whole boat, right? Yeah. Not just like, you know, like when you're young, you get a 20 from your dad or mom or, you know, and then, or 10. Yeah. Then you, then as you get a little bit older, they give you a 20 and a 30. It's like when you become a child of God, you get the whole kit and caboodle. You get his life, the whole thing. And in doing it, and then it's a cool thing that he did it, that he does it this way. Not that I think it's by choice, it's who he is. How it, it, he couldn't, like I think C.S. Lewis says, like <clears throat> we, can, we can conjure up thoughts and think about God. Well, I wonder if he would have done it this way, what if? And it's like, that's a great thing to think about, but that's actually not how God it. He's God beginning from the end. There's no, he doesn't have any thoughts. He is. Yeah. He's he, is. he just is. That, that's what it is. There is no what if. He just is. Yeah. And, um, and we don't, nothing is like that for our, in our world except for him. Yeah. Nothing is like that. So it's a really, I think it's one of the hardest things to really grasp and understand as an abstract con concept that, that like, <clears throat> oh yeah, he's the same yesterday and today and tomorrow. Okay, yeah, but what does that mean? Yeah. You know, because it means something in every piece of existence. Yeah. And we get like some li light level understanding, at least I do light level of understanding in like three areas of my life, let alone <laughs> like this complexity of, yeah. Yeah. of his greatness. And uh, so he saves us, he gives us everything, and then his spirit comes into us to make our life continually more and more like Jesus, right? Yeah. And the sanctification, yeah. you know, this process of maturity yeah. and these things. So how do you, thinking about that, how do you, and this is a little bit about what Al Lorenz and I were talking about last week. How do you work with God? What, what's it look like to like, I don't know if you're setting goals for yourself. I mean, I, I, yeah. we do. Some people don't like that or it's a new thing to bring goal along my spiritual development. They press back on it and I'm like, oh, I, but that's my whole framework for living yeah. is like, you know, what's the vision? The wrestler in you is like, hey, want, where, do we, where are we? Where do we want to be? Yeah. How do we get there? Yeah. Right? I mean. Who doesn't do that? Maybe, but maybe I think some people don't. I think the hard part is it can turn into works. It can. So you have to be very cautious of you why. You cannot get off the foundation. Why am I doing this? Like, what are the reasons? One of the things. So if those goals work. get set apart from this this reality of, of submitting your life to Jesus as both Lord and Savior, yeah. you, you're moving away from it. Correct. But when you get it lined up, how do you... What's that look like for you? What, 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 even if you've got a few, what, what are you working on? What's God yeah. working on in you? You know, let your light so shine yeah. before others, right? So I, th I think it changes. I think in your seasons, it, it changes. Mm -hmm. And it's like, for some people, it might be like, could you just read a verse? Yeah. Just a verse. Like, I'm not asking you to read a book. I'm not asking you just a verse. And for a long time, I listened to sermons, tons of sermons. I would listen to podcasts all the time, like Christian podcasts, mm -hmm. all this stuff. And then I felt impressed. God's like, okay, I don't want you to be... Like any of the, I need you, I want you to be who I created you to be. Yeah. And so then it starts this deep dive of like, okay, God, what do you want to show me? I'm asking for revelation and stuff. The thing that uh, lately, which is going to sound kind of funny. So I preach uh, like, you know, three, four, three weekends a month, let's say. And so I'm in my Bible and I get like, hey, let's, let's make, you know, let's get a sermon ready. And, and I, you know, and I really want to, you know, do the best that I can. Those two ladies in, in Brazil, one, one of the things they said is literally, they said this. You, God told me to tell you, you don't spend enough time with him. Mm -hmm. And my first reaction was, hold up. 
what do you mean I don't spend enough time? Like that was my initial, like, cause like, wait, what? And I kind of, and then as I thought about it is I spend time preparing and I, this, this probably a lot of pastors can relate. I spend time preparing a message for someone else. Yeah. I don't spend time with just him. I'm not preparing a sermon. No. God, what do you want to speak just to me? Yeah. And so this season if I want to preach with boldness, if I want to step out, everybody, and this isn't a political issue, isn't any, there's stuff that we see in front of us that let's say we feel impressed, like we want to do X, Y, Z. If I'm not backing off and saying, God, what do you want me to do in that relationship with him? And honestly, hunting, it, it kind of recalibrates me because I get to go and anybody who's never hunted, just go out and sit in the tree. Like if you've been there when, when the sunrise, when it comes up and you're in a tree and then nature, start, I mean, it's just like this, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. And then nature kind of surrounds you and, and that moment where it's like kind of warm and then yeah. when the sun rises, it gets, it drops cold uh -huh. and then it gets warm again, and you're sitting there like, oh gosh, what's happening? And then you start seeing like, so my, my, my middle son, we're out hunting and I'm trying to calm him down because his older brother got a deer and he's like, hey dad, how big was his deer? I just need to get, we need to get a bigger deer. I said, whoa. I said, so we prayed every time for him and I said, it, it doesn't matter if we get anything. God, we just want to see what you created. So one night we're, we're standing there and he goes, dad, dad, look. And we looked out and it was a, a fawn nursing off its mother. Mm. Never, I've never seen this ever. Yeah. And he goes, dad, look. And I said, oh my gosh, look at that. And then a little bit yeah. later, he goes, dad, was it in this, this doe, they take their back leg and they like scratch it. Yeah. Like, oh dad, they scratched the leg like a dog. That's yeah. so, and it was just like spending time with my son. And I can't happen to think, God goes to me, I just want to spend some time with yeah. you. Yeah. I just want to show you, could you just sit in your backyard and when the sun rises, I just want to, so when we were in Colorado, one thing that, one thing that we were asked to do is we, so we were at, you know, high peaks, we were at whatever, and we would ask God like, Hey, would you show us stuff? And we were in this, I forget, like we're at like 11 or 12,000 feet or whatever. And I have a picture I posted with like my, my boots and there's like a mountain range and there's this huge mountain in front of me. And I was just like, man, that's so big. Like God, you created that. And in my spirit, it's like, and I love you more. Mm -hmm. Like we all, we all know about the solar system. We all know about stars and galaxies, yeah. the earth, everything that was ever created, mountain ranges, rainforests, life and stuff. And he goes, and I love, you were my best yeah. creation. And of everything that's ever existed, you were the thing, because the devil was beautiful, right? And then he got cast out because of his pride. Yeah. The devil hates us so much because God goes, I'm going to create you in my image. Yeah. And I'm the best thing that's ever existed. And if I create you in my image, and he goes, and now look how beautiful I made you. And somebody's like, well, I'm overweight, I'm at this. And you're still the most beautiful thing he's created. Yeah. And so I think this season for me, God's like, slow down and I want to show you some stuff. Yeah. But it wasn't always like that. I mean, I think that, and it seems kind of silly. I'm like, oh, I should have been doing this back here. But I think we're probably all created different. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that. Just two things. When, you know, like you're listening or watching something. And like uh, every now and then there's like a, a little waypoint that gets set down, a waypoint, and the, the conversation keeps moving. Yeah. But you're, you're dropping these anchors so that like you'll remember where yeah. you were. It happens all the time. Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, one, <clears throat> that idea, uh, that reality of like you're out, you're out in nature and the sun comes up and you feel the, the even if there's like a, a light fog or yeah, it's awesome. visual sometimes it's yes. like that, right? But even when it's not visual, the sun coming up certainly is, but that cool air, is the sun will warm a piece of the layer, then it, yeah. then it doesn't get the next layer, and, and you feel this you can movement, feel it. and yeah. it's like, I, I mean, oh. like Harrison already said, just thinking about that, because there's something extremely, like infinitely valuable about, you know, if, if, you're, if you're with us, uh, if you're not regularly finding rhythms in your life, yeah, where, where you get a chance to be awed mm -hmm. by God. And he does it through a woman coming and saying, like, well, how do you know? That, like something you can't quite put your finger on. Yeah. He does it through a sun coming. His, just, He's everywhere. The magnitude of God is everywhere. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you're out with Eldridge in, in Colorado and, and praying, will you show me some of these things? Um, you talk about the deer. Uh, I was at Hope West Des Moines uh, this week and I go out and I get a text from somebody and they're like, get out here in the parking lot and bring your bow. And I'm like, you okay? What? what? And I certainly don't, I'm not driving around with my bow. I don't even have a turkey license yeah. yet. But uh, I get out there and here's this turkey. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably, you know, a young Tom and got a little beard on. Yeah. And, but like, 
he didn't, he was hugging this blue car. It must've been the right color for some attraction <laughs> to him. And uh, I, I was just like walking in, I was this close to him. Mm -hmm. And he was just like, he, you know, he ready to roll, but pretty trusting and getting close. And like, you know, at first you got the, the, the bubbly skin thing, the yeah. red, and then you got a little bit of an ugly neck in oh, some yeah. ways, but then the feathers, mm -hmm. the like that complexity of colors and different uh, types of feathers, mm -hmm. different functions. It's like, I got caught up in looking at that, like the black feather with the blue thing in it and the green. Yeah. And then when he'd run it, it'd be like a, a paint shifting car, you know. That's just a feather. Just a feather, and you know, <laughs> and it's like, that's cool. We were, we were in the mountains and this, this one, a friend that I met down there, he, uh, he's like, it was like four in the morning. We're in this cabin. He's like, Brady, get out of here, get out of here, get out of here. And I was like, what, what, what? And so we ran, I ran outside. I was like, what's up? What? Like, I was thinking there's like a mountain lion. Like, what's yeah. up? And he goes, listen, 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 listen. And it never happened. I said, what, what'd you hear? And it was a, uh, it was a mama elk. And it was calling. He's like, it must have lost the baby over, yeah. like, overnight. But, and he says, he said, these elk, he, we were in these mountains. And he goes, when they like, so if you ever hear. Are like, they clicking? Uh, it was like a, like it's a not a bugle. Or? Yeah, yeah. But yeah. it's like a. Yeah, and he said like he goes if you ever hear like an elk like bugle like during like rut for you yeah. right, and he goes it like echoes in the mountains. That's so cool. And you're sitting there like my father-in-law was telling me the other day, and uh, I think it was an eagle came, and and later he, like you could see these like feathers like whatever, and it, it had gotten like a barn owl or something yeah. in the tree, and it was just like when you like stop and you look and you see nature and you see all of this stuff like we had a bunch of turkeys come up one night we were hunting or like even when a coyote coyotes are like. You know these mangy animals, but just like how they trot through the field, yeah. and you're sitting there going, "Wow, this Do, is cool." Just doing what they're made for. Yeah, and yeah. my son goes, "Dad, how do?" They? So right now the the bucks, you know, they're kind of spar fighting, but they all hang out together. It's like boys club. It's like and a then, wrestling team. Yes, you know. But all of a sudden, we're going to individuals. Right. And we don't want to be. A, and my son goes, "How do they know that they don't like each other anymore?" And then, and I go, "That's how God created them." I said, "It's just their 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 chemicals in their body change. It's like this." nature yeah. just everything when you stop and you look and and god goes and i love you way more yeah i gave you all this stuff to enjoy and i love you infinitely more than all this like when joe it wasn't a joke and god goes where were you oh yeah when i formed the stars yeah when i put planets like i don't worry that the sun that we're gonna the earth is gonna rotate and the sun's gonna come up right now and god's like if you don't worry about that why are you worried about your job why are you worried you know, about this? this Job thing? Job spends most of that long book talk, telling his story to God. Hey, yeah, what's up with that? I mean, he got raked over the coals. Mm -hmm. Like in the deepest, most hurtful ways that a person can. Yeah. Family ripped apart from him, uh, his own life, his friends. Oh, yeah. And then, you know, you got these glimmers of hope still coming. And, uh, but he's just railing on God, and I don't know, mid chap 30, chap, I don't know where, I haven't read it for a yeah. while. Um, and like, you hear him doing that to God, like, like the, you know, like finger in the chest type, like anger. And you, you just brought up the other side of that, like, because I think God was like sitting there, it's his, he loves Job. He's Lord. <laughs> and he's listening <laughs> with, a, with a good heart. He knows that he's been hurt, and that's that, that's what comes out of us when we're in that spot. Yeah. And God's good enough, big enough, Lord enough to to let you like throw your fit, to be hurt, to mourn and yes. cry. But then I think uh, you know, as you, you were reading some of that, the, the, those petitions to God from Job, it's like I don't, I don't know if you want to say that to him. It, it, it seemed like it crossed the line, right? Yeah. But we know that we're often across the line when we're, when we're hurt and broken and lonely. I think it's, I think it's like that honesty. It's like David would, would be another one. Yeah. Read the Psalms and you're like, this guy's here, he's here, he's yeah. here. It's like, God, you're everything to me. And then it's like, God, where are you? You've and forsaken me. You know me. how like your computer goes bad and you can't, you can't get it back? Yeah. And it's like you call tech support and they're like, uh, let's see. We're going to get you the best person on that. Hi, this is Eric on tech support. I'm, I'm the company's best person on helping you get back going. Let's uh, unplug that and plug it back in. And I'm like, what? Yeah. All but, right, buddy. But I think that's what God does with Joel because it's like a kid throwing a fit. He, he kind of says, hey, he picks him up and sets him down there and he says, all right, I've heard you. Now let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. And it's not, I don't think God is being mean in it. He's being Lord in it because Job needs that type of a reset rescue. This deep, 
sense of I've always been here. I am the same yesterday and today tomorrow. You can count on me through the best of your life and the worst of your life. Yeah. And, and that process starts happening and it's like the, the restoration begins and he's made new again and it's just like God delivering himself as both Lord and Savior. When you said rhythms, like that's such a good, because even now that I'm traveling more, yeah. I've noticed my rhythms yeah. have gotten off. Yeah. And it's harder to do. And so I'm trying to figure out what the new rhythm looks like. But when you mentioned rhythms, I think something for everybody, is, it's like super simple. And it yeah. sounds kind of like, okay, that's really silly. Ask God questions. Yeah. Like yeah. just in anything, like pick a hurt in your life, pick a whatever and go, God, can you show me the goodness in this? Can you, like, I don't understand. Because a lot of times it's like, God just goes, I'm waiting for you to ask me. Like, yeah. and you can ask me anything. I, I read the other day and it was super, it's Moses. And he goes, I want to see your glory. Mm. And God's like, no, 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 God, can I see your glory? No, this is Brandon McNay's translation, but this is the gist yeah, of it. Yeah. And God is like, if I show you this, my glory, my goodness, it'll kill you. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn around and show you my backside. And I'm going to take my hand and yeah. cover you so you can barely see the glow of my goodness, my glory. That you're gonna, and it says that Moses, after spending time, and this would happen over and over again. He would come down or come out of the, the, the tent, you know, and stuff. And his face would be glowing from God's goodness. Yeah. And I think, like, God didn't say, that's a dumb question, Moses. Right. You're an idiot. Why would you want to see me? You can't, you're, a, you're a nothing. You're stupid. This is how we think. Yeah. You're stupid. You're not worth it. You're unworthy. And you're dumb. And Moses is, like, bold enough to go, can I see your glory? And God goes, all right, I won't show you all of it, but I'll, I'll give you a little glimmer. Yeah. And so I think that's like, yeah. every asking questions is like, God, I don't understand this season. Typically it's <clears throat> what I've noticed lately. This is what I thought my life was going to be. And I'm somewhere over yeah. here yeah. and God, I don't understand this. And so what we do is a Job or a, a David, you're going, God, where are you at? Yeah. But when you realize that he takes you on these, it's like that re recalculating and he'll take you and he course corrects. And then you realize like David, I listened to this amazing uh, sermon. So Dave, David's out in the, in the wilderness, and I've been over there, like, Ein Gedi and all these, like, amazing, cool places, right? Okay, he's supposed to be king. He's anointed king, all this type of stuff. And he's traveling around in caves. He's living in caves, right? And all these people are like, I thought you were supposed to be the king and all this stuff. But when it came to him being king, when they were like, hey, where should we send our forces? David goes, all right, so here's the deal. There's going to be this thing um, in the land. You're not going to see it, but you're going to go here. There's going to be a water source. There's going to be this, like, indentation, and your all of our troops can get water there. They can hide there or whatever. And then I want you to attack this city. And they go, how do you know this, David? You're the king. How do you know the layout of the land? He's like, I've lived in the land. And it all made yeah, sense. Right. I've lived in the land. I've been on the run. I know the caves. I know. And so I think a lot of times we get so mad at God for where we've been. And if we just go, God, can you show me why I had to go there? And sometimes it's our fault. And then he uses that for his goodness and for his glory. Um, got a few more coming in here. Kathy Moser, a cousin of mine down in Missouri. I would love to hear your entire story, Brandon. I got chills listening to what you were saying. When I was little, we lived outside of Forest City. I remember waking up, crying, and telling my mom that God told me that Aunt Fanny passed away. It was shortly after that mom got a phone call telling her about Fanny. Another time my dad worked at Winnebago and there was a fire there. I once again woke up from my nap crying to tell my mom her dad was in a fire. Hmm. I felt and still feel that God was talking to me. It happens. Oh, yeah, all the time. And when God, those things happen to people all the time. Mm -hmm. it's kind of this last question is like when, when, when you, for, and for people, right? How do you make sure that you're, what are, what are the things that you do to make sure you're in tune with knowing that when what Kathy is describing there or what you've shared today is actually like, a, how do you stay in tune to not just be like, that was a bad dream yeah. you know, and that's it. That's the only like reality that you attach to yeah. it. How do you stay in tune to, to keep that, that lens of God on things? So I think there's always constantly noises and you hear these thoughts of like, I'm an idiot. Okay, well, that's not God, right? So we have to start to, it's like, we're getting all these thoughts. We're getting all these things that's, that's happening. A buddy of mine, I just went to a, listen to him, him talk, and he wrote a book, and it's about listening to God. And uh, he was talking about how he had a little, his little girl, she's like watching Veggie Tales. And he's like, hey, Lucy, Lucy. She can hear him saying Lucy, but she's tuned into that TV show. 
He shuts off the TV, he'd said, and he goes, Lucy, she goes, yeah, dad, there's so much stuff. One of the most unbelievable, fantastic things about Colorado that happened that I didn't think was gonna happen, I had no cell reception. And Reese goes, hey, hey guys, when you're up here, I want you to, do you tell, like there was like CEOs, there were fighter pilots, I mean, you name it, this group, there was tons of people that were way more important than me. And he goes, and if you can't run your company and you haven't designed it where you can be gone a week, that's on you. And Good he point. goes, turn your phone off, tell your families that you'll talk to them in a week. And I, I remember Aaron picking me, my wife picked me up at the airport and she's like, did you hear about this? And I was like, I don't know anything. I heard God so, like, so yeah. one, one tool that I don't do, uh, especially enough, and I hadn't done, that we, we really practiced on was journaling. Mm. And listening and going and asking God a question and then just writing down what you feel and then going over it. And so how do you tune yourself? You have to constantly say, God, what do you want to say? And, and be listening for that voice. But it all goes back to scripture too. Yeah. That's the number one way he's going to speak to us, right? Is scripture. And if you don't know scripture, if you don't read scripture, if you don't understand his voice, because you have to know even what the scripture means because the devil came to tempt God and he was right. like, hey, what about this and this and this and this? And God's like, whoa, 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 This is what the word says. Yeah. And so even Jesus had to rely on scripture. So it's starting with scripture, but then it's practicing it and it's praying and it kind of sounds silly. Most people don't even want to pray out loud. Right. It's, God, I love you. So like every night I pray with my boys. Yeah. And I'm like, God, thank you so much for them. And I'm modeling. And it, it can be fun. So like when we go to school, they hate this. So I'm like praying and I'm getting really loud. I don't do this all the time, but a lot of times. And then I end it with this. And thank you for giving me one hot mama. Yeah. And they're like, dad. Yeah. And I'm like, but this is what prayers can be. I am thankful for yeah. this, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And so like sometimes they'll pray and they'll, go, and they'll like test me. And they'll be like, God, thanks for the switch. Amen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they'll look at me like, and I go, that was a good one. Yeah. I bet he likes this. When I interviewed Jamie Pollard up in his uh, office up at Iowa State, <clears throat> late last summer, I guess it was. I don't know when it was. Yeah. Um, he was talking to him, it was coffee and prayer, right? Yeah. So he was saying that, you know, I'm a binge prayer. I yeah. get on it. I get off it. And I don't know if I'm your guy to talk about that stuff. And I'm like, no, that's exactly You're what we need to know yeah. because we think that we're not doing it right. Yeah. And there, there is no right. There's no right. It's available and ready and invited. Go for it. Yeah. Pick it up. Every time you pick it up, it'll be right again. No matter how long, what it looked like in the yeah. rearview mirror. Perfect again. Yeah. Um, but he, he said uh, that he used to be up in the, you know, the, the west, I think it's the west side, home team side. Yep. Down on the end, they have an athletic department uh, suite. Yeah. And uh, he'd be down there and he, he said, I, you know, I used to pray that we would win. And now I would really just, and this is, you know, it's shifted his prayer life. Uh, because of the, the hard, hard health uh, start with his youngest son, yeah. his, his heart his heart attack. There were two big things in his life that really molded and shaped how he talks with God and listens. Yeah. And he just said, you know, it's one of those things where now I'm just praying that, you know, the, the event go, goes great and nobody gets hurt and, you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. And I said, and that the Cyclones win. <laughs> right? Like, here's this. But also, you know. Yeah. yeah. It, yeah. You know, and, and, you know, if you can do this yeah. thing too, we'd be good. But why wouldn't we ask those things, right? Yeah. It, Ask for things that are appropriate and that are arguably inappropriate. Yeah. Right? Well, the son's deputy, hey, can my son sit next to yeah. sex year? It's like, yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, lady. Yeah. Helicopter <laughs> and, parent, yeah. like galore. Right and then there. I can imagine them, like, when they were like, hey, let's, let's, is it lightning? Let's get lightning. Like, get all these guys. And yeah. just like, boys, boys, Call boys. Call down boys. lightning and thunder. Boys, I get it. I get it. And I could just imagine, like, there was this thing, of, like, that's not who I'm called to be. But, I also understand that you know how much authority I have. Like, there's this, like... I have a fun story for this. Okay. <laughs> Lord, let's call lightning and thunder down and zap them, mm -hmm. right? He's like, slow down. Not that he couldn't. Oh, yeah. But he's good. Yeah. And, that, that, and it's this lesson in that. And they don't even know it. Yeah. My dad, uh, we, we had these Mustang, two Mustangs when we were like, you know, 14, 15, 16 year old, but like 68, I think 68 and 69. Mm -hmm. Larry Hawbaker repainted, you know, did the body yeah. work, repainted them and... Um, right here in, in Dallas Center. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, you know, we get our license. My dad had this comment, like, and they didn't have the big engine. Yeah. They had, like, the medium one. And he'd be like, you know, you guys need to be careful. And we're like, oh, we are. We are 16, right? Yeah. Of course that. We and he goes, yeah, right. And he said this. He's like, there's a little hot rod in all of us. Mm -hmm. And it's that, I think, it, I always think of that when this Sons of Thunder, like, you know, and mom, can these guys sit at your right side? Yeah, and then we'll call uh, thunder and lightning down on our enemies. And it's like, 
slow down here. Yeah. But there's this little, you get, you, oh. get, you get access to this, not just this, this goodness of God, but it's the power of life itself because it's God. And we learn, we, it takes time to learn how to not abuse it, mm -hmm. how to not ignore it, neglect it, uh, but how to really use it in love for the world around us. And Human nature is hard too. To receive it in that way. Too. We all are like, you know, you, anybody that has like a word from God and it's like yeah. spot on. Yeah. Our thing is, oh, I'm gonna worship them, and I'm gonna, and it's like this human nature. It's like just like um, uh, Saul, right? They're like they, people are like, we want a king, yeah. And God's like, no, no you don't. don't. No, we want it. And he no, goes, you don't. He goes, okay, I am your I'll, king. I'll give you a king. Yeah. yeah. And here's the thing: kings are great, right? And, and and CEOs and presidents and all these these people are great when they're good, but when they're not good, when we give one person all this power, if they're good, all oh, they can get stuff done. But we're all human. Yeah. And so giving one person all this power, he's like, this, this could be really bad. Well, we want Saul because look at him. He's tall. He's handsome. That's like one of my favorite stories. And then when Samuel comes, he's like, hey, Jesse, where are the boys? Uh, God told me there was going to be a boy from your house. And he goes, well, these are the boys. And he goes, and God goes, no, they're not. And he goes, are you sure? His own dad goes, oh, there's the boy in the field. Didn't even call, he said like the boy over yeah. there. Like didn't even call him by name. And it's like, let me see him. And God goes, yep. Yep. Because everybody, all of us go, well, we want a leader that's this. And God goes, well, I want a leader that's this. And it can be both, but I want I care more about your heart. I, I, I want to give you a leader that knows that I'm the leader, mm -hmm. I think is what God And that's what David, David messed up yeah. all the time. Yeah. But he always turns to God, I'm so sorry. He understood God's goodness. Mm -hmm. That even in, in sin, he could turn to God in humility with a contrite heart, all those things. Mm -hmm. And that God would restore him. Because he's good. Yeah. Right? Uh, getting ready to close up here. Uh, I'm gonna get this off of here for a second. Put this up. How can we pray for you? Uh, so we've had coffee. This conversation, is getting fancy. Coffee. I mean, right. you're you're stepping up your game. Yeah, we'll you got see. Buttons. I don't know. What people can't see is there's like 30 people right here. We yeah. got yeah. film crews, TV yeah. right. stations. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's just a ton of stuff. Going yeah, on. yeah. <laughs> editors, producers. They make us shots. look really good. Yeah, like editor. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, I do want to announce this because uh, Tim Murphy says just is a proclamation this morning. Uh, God is a Cyclone fan. We all know that. Okay? So it's good to get it out there. Sometimes truth hurts. Yeah. I mean, it's in there. It can, I think. Yeah. I think it's somewhere. Maybe in that Second Opinions book yeah, you yeah, were it's, talking it's, about. It's definitely in Second Opinions. never opinion. heard that, and I love that. Yeah. Anytime people say something That's like, a long book, too, isn't it? Anytime, it might any, be the longest book of the Bible. People always say, well, this and this. And I said, is that in Second Opinions? Yeah. Because like, I don't know if that's in the Bible. Yeah. I didn't get a copy of that. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm giving you one now. Yeah. You know? This is what God really yeah. thinks. Okay. Kathy says, please continue to pray for her friend and daughters. Hey, one thing on staying connected to God and praying. Uh, we did this a few weeks ago. We were working through Psalm 23. Mm -hmm. And uh, you mentioned like, you know, some people are, I don't know if that's, you know, and for my hot babe, you know, yeah. in a prayer. And uh, if we're not sure how to talk with God or how to pray and those sorts of things, there, there's like, a, I, I, they're not starters, but they're good starters. But they're also good middle of the road and finishes yeah. the Lord's prayer. These, oh, these prescriptive prayers that God gives us. Jesus, how should we pray? Pray like this. It's, te it's his teaching with the, with the force of heaven. Yeah. That's yeah. what this stuff is. So why wouldn't you? And I, I just challenge everybody to find somebody today, mm. whether even if it's you in the mirror or a friend, sit down and read Psalm 23 out loud. Yeah. It does something different than sitting there just doing it with your eyes and internal. It's speaking. My, my wife, it was so funny. She'll be like, I'm praying. I said, I can't hear you. She's like, God can. I said, yeah, he can. I said, but there's something about speaking. Yeah. And so I said, and so she, it was funny. She goes, yeah. I said, when God said, let there be light, he didn't just do it. And she flipped the switch. It wasn't like that. He said, let there be light. Like he spoke, spoke, speaking is important. And if we have that same spirit, we need to speak. And so yeah. when I pray over my boys, I speak it over them. But a lot of times people don't feel comfortable. So go alone. Yeah. Get in, a, get in yeah. your closet. Yeah. Do whatever. And speak. And yeah. say, God, I love you. And declare those things over your life. And it's powerful. You know, you get a new job, a new this, new that. You're in a new traveling uh, yeah. ministry. There's a, there's, there's a language to learn. You know, you know like there's, a, there's rhythms and language of how communication works and things like that. You know, it's like. Well, I want to be a preacher evangelist. Like, so start watching sermons. Well, is, that's a little like, what about being you? It's like, uh, yeah, I was like probably one of the best people in the world at taking people down with doubles and, and singles. Yeah. Okay, and but but I practiced a lot and watched a lot a lot of other guys work technique. 
yeah. and you're trying it out, seeing if their armor fits, and it's like, I can't do that. So you have to modify it because you have your own unique set yes. of uh, quickness, explosion, strength, uh, endurance. You have, and you. So you have to find the way that it works for yeah. you. And I think that like, that's what I think the value. You talk about like how do we communicate and hear from God? It, it's it's it. There's a reason this Bible is preserved for all time. Yeah. Like, like even at the end, yeah. when we shift over and, you know, we're, we're, we're all caught up in God's presence mm -hmm. in a new earth and new heaven, mm -hmm. this word will still, it's not like, okay, now we're, we're done with the, the elementary ways of God. This word will stand through all that time yeah. and it will inform and we'll be in that place of like, uh, Ka uh, Kathy, my cousin said that she read, uh, Psalm 23 with this friend of hers that was hurting mm -hmm. and, and sick. And they were barely into like two or three lines and uh, they were both just weeping. And I'm like, I know exactly mm -hmm. what you're talking about. Because when we get into that place of vulnerability with God, and because what's happening in there is you're experiencing Lord and Savior in those moments. Yeah. You're humbled before him as Lord, as Lord of all things. Yeah. In that place of like, help me, I'm not enough. And, and you are. And you're receiving from him his mm -hmm. life, his savior. Yeah. And it's just like, it, it goes off the chart. And all these things that he's made in us, his, his image, they get all mixed up on us. And we don't know if we're laughing going or on crying right now? Or, yeah. or, yeah. or excited or yeah. in fear. <laughs> and what that is, is it's awe. Mm -hmm. And we're dropped in it. And it's, the, it's like one of these cloud nine things. Mm -hmm. We never want to come out of that. But it's like, yep. And then I want you to go let your light shine before others. So yeah. I'm not leaving you, but it, go tell others about this. Yeah. Yeah. Because why wouldn't you want, I mean, it, it changes, like that book changes everything. Everything. It, like it, how I parent, how I'm a husband, like it, how I interact with people. Like I love people and I see there's a, there's a line in a song that I love. I have it on my tattoo. It's break my heart for what breaks mm -hmm. yours. And people can say all this that they want about Christians, but when you truly read that book, when you believe it, and when you declare that Jesus is Lord, right, it changes everything because we, you have to look at people, even in their worst moments, yeah. and go, I was you. Yeah. I am you. And, and the thing, I think, especially right now in all of this political climate, yeah. I told some people in like this chat, people are like, oh, blah, blah, blah. And I said, remember, we're all in the same community. We're all in the same community. And I remember one of my sons was playing, was playing baseball. And, I, and we're all Dallas Center Grimes baseball, okay? Eventually, they're all going to be on the same, yeah, same high school. school. And we're in there, and you can see the dads, and I was one of them. Come on! like boom. And, I, and I backed off, and I go, we're all going to be on the same team. Yeah. All these boys. Like, and regardless of outcomes on anything, pick it school board, pick it uh, city council, presidential. We're all – and then you go out to the world. We're all children of God. But it's hard. And it's weird to look at somebody and go, wait, God loves that person just as much as me. But they, bum, 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 bum. And, he, and he's like, yep, and there's, I died for them too. Yeah. Just as much as I died for you. Yeah. Well, yeah, but do you know God what they did and how they hurt me? Another thing that sometimes you should uh, talk about, forgiveness. Mm -hmm. I preached on that one time and it lit up people. It, because it, there's that unforgiving servant thing in there. And it's crazy when he talks about it's, it's God forgiving us. And we don't turn around and forgive people. It says, I, I'll give way to the torments or to come into your life. Yeah. Forgiveness. And one thing that I learned, another thing I learned in Colorado is I thought the wounds from my father, the, that horrible season that I went through, I forgave him. Mm -hmm. But forgiveness doesn't equate to healing. They're completely separate. I can forgive someone, yet the wounds still be there yeah. and still need healing. Yeah. And typically we operate out of those wounds all the time. All the time. And so when I see somebody I don't like, is it really them that I don't like? Or is it that thing in me that's crying out that yeah. I don't like? But this word, it levels the playing field for everybody because it's for everybody. Some uh, churches that I've been to, and, and I think we have, the, we have a version of it as well at Hope. On the back of the free Bibles we give yeah. away, it has like a little warning sticker. Nice. Warning, like uh, diving into this book is critically dangerous to your life it will change the entire thing mm, that's good and like it's that. kind of a fun little oh, thing yeah. because it, it's true that's what god intends to do he's going because what you do realize is like if you've never known his life and his life living in you and the offer of that uh 
Paul says, you, you know, <laughs> we were already dead. Yeah. And I think that's, that's the hard part of it is like, you can, God reigns on the just and the unjust. And we can, we look around and see people living a life apart from God. And they, you know, they got a house, they got a yeah. car, they got this, got that. They got stuff. They even have friends and they have good relationships. And it's like, yep, mm -hmm. that's, the, that's because God is good. Mm -hmm. And I'm not here to talk about them. I'm here to talk about you. Yeah. So let's work on you. And so, but when the revelation happens and we realize, you know, you come up to that morning and the sun comes up and you feel this air moving and you, we know it, right? We know, we're sitting here, we've been in it and we know it. And then when we go out there at dusk or at dawn, pre-dawn again, and it comes again, it's just like, <sighs> again. And we, we've already known that. But every single time, it's like, holy smoke, is that cool. I remember, every time. I remember <laughs> baptizing people. And I remember the first time I cried. Oh, man. And I thought, why would I be allowed to baptize people? Yeah. And then I started doing enough baptisms that it became like a thing. Yeah. Okay? And there's nothing wrong with that, but I didn't have the awe that I once had. Right? Yeah. And there was this, this couple that came, and I was a young old pastor over them at the time. And their previous church, um, they, they had a, a few like this handicaps, but they were fine. Yeah. But the previous church was like, well, you don't know what you're doing, so we're not going to baptize you. Mm. And this guy, like, I, like it, I'm not holding back tears. I remember him saying, I want to get baptized. And so we're like, we're going to baptize you. And I remember him getting into the baptism tank. And I put my hand on his back. And we're getting ready to baptize him. And for years, I hadn't felt the awe. And when you're asking him, like, do you believe Jesus is Lord and Savior? Because for years he's been told, this isn't even for you. Yeah. By people that didn't know what they're doing. And I could feel on his back, he was shaking. I want this so bad. Yes, I do. And I, we baptized him and I brought him up and I am crying. Everybody's crying because they know the story. And, I was, and God was just like, and that's what it's like every, every single, single time. time. Whether you baptize a thousand people in a day, yeah. if one person says, yes, Lord, that's it. People think God's this impatient. He's the most patient yeah. person ever because he will wait someone's entire life for them to say, Father, and he's, and it says heaven throws a party Unbel yeah. for one. In the fields of faith thing, the 99 for the one, yeah. it doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Why would you leave 99 for one unless you've been the one? I've been yeah. the one, so I understand how important just me yeah. Just you, just them. And then that often God peels back and goes, you've grown so accustomed yeah. to my goodness. You still don't realize how good I am. And he levels up again. Yeah. And he goes, I'm going to show you again. So that's the cool part. Yeah. Of it. it's, like, it's awesome. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. We've got, uh, Kathy says, if you ever come to Missouri, let me know. I'd love to come and hear your ministries. Find a church. Okay. I'll come. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, Lee Davidson. Yeah. Down in Key West. He's pretty, I told uh, you a story about him. I remember uh, wrestling wrestling yeah. spirits and so uh, his wife Lee says good morning from Key West we might need a little church today two of the two of the Davidson's former students you got it good morning Lee he, he wrestled I, I said something snippy to him one time in PE and Mr. Davidson is like McNace get over here yeah and you're he, coming out for wrestling I'm yeah, gonna pound you and he literally in front of everybody <laughs> pounded me on the mat I was like Mr. Davidson yeah. I won't say anything ever again yeah. <laughs> ever. I love it you know, those are two of my favorite people I've ever known in life he's um, um, Mr. Davidson Davidson yeah, yeah. So we're at the end. Uh, we've got a couple of prayer requests. We've mentioned them already. We're going to pray for healing, wholeness for people's lives. Uh, if you've got any, now would be the time to put them up because we're going to pray and then we're going to call it for the week. Yeah. Right. So I'll, how about I'll start and you finish? Uh, Lord, we just say thanks for this day. I want to say thanks for Brandon, uh, the life you've given him, the, the family that you've uh, given him and, uh, to lead, to be part of, to steward uh, for his relationship with his wife, that their marriage would be strength, uh, strengthened by your spirit. And they give them confidence in it to walk uh, tightly together and even as they're sometimes apart, uh, to move in those ways that are uh, still in unity. And so uh, thanks for like the relationship with him and his kids, uh, the hunting and the, the, all those things. It's not, not even so much for the deer, but just the experience of time together and the picture that it gives him and by his sharing it gives us that... Uh, it's not the stuff that we do with you that's that's the greatest thing. It's the fact that you invite us to be in your presence. And so we thank you for that. Give all of us a reminder that we, that's actually what we're looking for today is for you to draw us near to you, uh, to, to be aware of your presence in our life and your love, your goodness. And so we lift these things up to you and look forward to Brandon coming back.
God, we just pray right now for uh, restoration, for healing. Father God, uh, in the Bible, the centurion said, God, I don't even need you to come here. I know that, that even at a distance that you can heal. And so we declare right now, God, we know you are good. Uh, um, and, and I don't even need to be with anyone in their rooms. We don't even need to lay hands. God, you are so good that even from a distance right now, as we're speaking, Holy Spirit, we pray for healing. We pray for restoration. We pray for redemption. We pray for all the lost things, uh, the people, the, 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 the wounds and all that stuff. We pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ, by his blood right now, yeah. we claim authority over every single person's life that they would see your goodness. Father God, I pray right now that every single person that's listening that feels like that's me, I pray that you would give them a moment, not in a year, but today. Father God, that they would have moments they'd be able to reach out to Pastor Eric and share cool stories about your goodness, about your greatness. Father God, would you show your people today your glory and your goodness. We pray right now for authority to rest on their lives, not their authority, but your authority. Um, Father, I just ask right now that you would nudge every single person, person that's listening, just nudge them into the direction you want them to go. And we pray right now in terms of sacrifice that there's something in their lives that they're supposed to give up. Right now as I'm speaking, Holy Spirit, we know that you are powerful and you are able. So we pray right now that they would be able to give those things up because when you are Lord, the things that you yeah. ask us to sacrifice, there's always a good outcome. We yeah. pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Brandon. Yeah. Good to see you, man. Yeah. God it's good bless to be here. You. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, this will be up on YouTube later. A uh, little editing. Throw some fancy music on the front and back. Like of it. So, but thanks for joining us live. We appreciate that. Uh,